what do you want to talk about today, Keith? Well, um, in the last podcast we did, um, it was we went into a little bit about the gymnasium. Yeah. But I think it would be good to give it uh, a really like proper analysis uh, or exploration as to like what we mean and all that um, when we say gymnasium. Um, and uh, yeah, so th that's kind of just what I wanted to hit on more. And if we get into whatever else, that's cool by me. Um, so do you want to give a summary then of what we what we're talking about on the podcast at the beginning of the last one, which was episode fourteen, I think. Yeah, I don't know the numbers of the episodes, but so when you say gymnasium, what do you mean about what do you mean by gymnasium? Um, well, it, it, that's an interesting question because what I mean when I say gymnasium is different than what you mean when you say gymnasium, or at least it was. Um, the I guess the conception of a gym, if someone says gym, gymnasium, for me, uh, when you asked me two months ago, it would have been a uh, like a place where people play sports or lift weights or do some type of physical activity. But um, you explained it that in places like, I think you said Greece and Germany, when you say gymnasium, it's, it's a place of education, uh, like of learning. It's like a high school almost, right? Yeah, uh, it's so like what, a high like, school for preparing for university, preparing for higher education, yeah. Yeah, and then um, obviously you've been doing a lot of research into like what, the, what an ancient gymnasium uh, would have meant like an ancient Athenian gym gymnasium would have been uh, more to the combination of those things where you're studying philosophy and mathematics, uh, but you're also doing um, uh, certain types of training and exercise and movement uh, all in the same place. So um, I think, uh, I guess the, the, Obviously, that it was an old Western tradition from like the origination of the West. If you consider like Greece to be where the West originated to some extent, um, then that's kind of been bifurcated into these two um, separate entities where it's like the learning happens in one place, the physical activity happens in a different place. And um, it wasn't always that way. And kind of what we've been going on about for well, a while now with these podcasts is just trying to combine those things, your mind and your movement, um, and figure out why they were ever separated and how they reintegrate into a, uh, a modern practice um, because it's, to continue down the path where they're both separate things just gets you just gets them further separated and you either become more eggheaded or more um uh what do you want to call it um meatheaded nice yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah that, that's pretty much the broad overview of like what a gymnasium may mean now what it did mean and kind of why we're even talking about it uh, is to combine that. Um, well, it's, it's to further develop the mind body thing. I mean, th this is something that you introduced to me is wanting to uh, research and learn and maybe uh, write about your own method of creating a, a Western mind body practice and uh, what better place to do so than recreate uh not necessarily um, recreate it in exact form, but with the spirit of the ancient gymnasium of, of bringing these things back together. Um, so there, there was, I know uh, I had said this in the, the podcast as well, but there was a, a really good article from the Atlantic back from nine, 1859 or something, a guy named Cheever wrote, um, I forget the name of it now. It's called but... the, I think it's just called the gymnasium. Okay, the gymnasium, and he goes I into. Just, yeah, explaining... I just stumbled across it on YouTube on um, Google. It was it wasn't recommended to me. I just found it, and I was about to click away because I saw the Atlantic. I thought it was some modern thing, 
And then I saw the date. So I went back and read it. It's amazing. Yeah. And he goes into, um, he goes into a, uh, pretty much the history of the gymnasium, how it's developed and, and uh, changed and what they were actually doing back then. He even describes um, the architecture of it. I mean, like the, the different like rooms and areas it ha- and different uh, like alcoves and like there's a, there's a specific structure for the, for a gymnasium in um, ancient Greece. And I think he said over time, like it, as that morphed into more of like a Roman empire thing as uh, centuries went on, like they kind of changed it uh, into like a different type of structure and, and all that. But the um, there was a, a very specific like arrangement of rooms and everything that would so um, I, that's something I picked up on that I thought was interesting is because it wasn't just about what you did there. It was actually the place itself had a meaning to it um, mm-hmm. that helped structure the activities that went on there. Uh, so if you went to a gymnasium in one place, it would be very similar to another place in terms of its layout um, and what went on in each area of the structure. Yeah, so it's like this. These they were more integrated, the departments or the uh, they would call the faculties were much more integrated than um, we would have now. It's not like there's a school or a college with a like a sports center or gymnasium that we think of in the West, sort of attached to the side, tacked onto. It's more that the whole thing was integrated. There was like people like sort philosophers like saying there'd be music being played but i'm assuming also learned as well there was movements done in time with music as well as the athletic training and all these things were uh coming out of a sort of a core philosophical view of the world um rather than just being like random subjects so it's like it's in a way we can't really imagine now we're just thinking putting different subjects together but really they're starting from it all coming out of one place they don't really need put together it's all expressions of one kind of way of being um, and I thought the word gymnasium, the history of the word gymnasium, gymnasium is quite poetic and good um, example of what's happened to all this, this education in general in the West is the fact that in the English speaking countries, and I think Spanish as well, gymnasium is the gym. You go there to do physical exercises. And in most of the European countries, European languages, um, Greece, Germany and others, uh, gymnasium is uh, high school, like we're saying, or um, preparing for higher education. And I just thought, how can it be? Because I got confused by that because I live in Cyprus and I got confused by that. Uh, somebody was giving me directions and they said, I'll oh, pass the gymnasium or whatever they say. And uh, I was confused because there was a high school there. There was no, I didn't know there was a gym there. And uh, that's what it turned out they were talking about. So I thought this is strange that the it's used in opposite ways. But then if you go back to the root of it, it was one thing. And for some reason, in some places, the words just gone one way and gone the other. But it's really it's what's happened in the Western culture in general is the mind and body have been split like that. Uh, with you go to mind experts to learn mind stuff, and then you go to body experts to learn body stuff. It's not as explicit as that, but it's basically how it's done. The mind and body th- split is in the person individually and also sort of in the culture and, and, and in the education. We talked about this in the last podcast, the last one of these videos with uh, Richard about uh, the ways it could be in schools and physical education and widening it. So this is this is kind of like a continuation of that, what we're saying here, um, that idea. So the the idea would be how do we how do we look at how they did it before, where they had these things together and they trained them together, and then make our own version of that now. So I'm not talking about like. Uh, reconstruction or LARPing about the way they did it and saying up exactly like that. It's different context now. But the the general principle of training things together, uh, the one difference is we're starting from a different place. They already had what we've been calling like psychophysical. They've already had a kind of psychophysical view of life that that was an expression of, I think. We have to get back to the psychophysical view of life. Uh, we can't just, you can't just cram a few di- like activities in one small space and go oh now we're the ancient greeks obviously um 
So one of the things that I've been working on, and uh, I know you are in a different way, is how to how to do things, learn things, or train, or to move in such a way that it integrates mind and body, uh, depending on how you view it, like it should be or was, or integrates mind and body in a more um, uh, useful way, just not just for, for movement and exercise and those things, but also just for learning in general. And that's going to require techniques to kind of help us bring ourselves back together. And then we can maybe look at how we would have one place where you learn multiple things at once. So obviously there's like private schools and stuff, small schools that maybe are more focused on things like this, but in public education, they're just not for many reasons. And uh, how we do it for ourselves and then for others, that's, um, that's what we're talking about. So do you have any ideas for that? I actually have a question for you sure. that just came to mind. Uh, um... Do you or have you ever considered using um, uh, music as part of your like postural lessons? Like when, um, when you're having someone give themselves directions on how they move, like if you if you um, it, uh, like I remember when we this was a, a maybe two years ago at this point when I, I took lessons with you um, and it was difficult when you started uh layering different directions to yourself it was difficult for me to remember them but i can re remember a four minute song every word of it and i'm wondering if uh if you ever considered or if anybody ever brought up like if you had those different rules and uh put them to a song almost or to music would it be easier to uh remember them or act them out in in concert for uh if you want to just have fun with words um with one another well that's a good question because uh this is the kind of things that we're talking about putting things together looking at things together like this rather than them being separate disciplines uh because i think a lot's been lost by separating these things in the first place because uh you know i'm scottish obviously uh bog pipes which i obviously used to play briefly when i was younger stereotype but they were in war you know they were like they're not some sep not a separate thing this meant really meant something when the bogpipes were playing uh so anyway so and i'm sure the greeks uh and all these other cultures had their own versions for this so uh, i haven't used music directly like that uh it would be interesting as an experiment i might uh one problem i would see with it being if it's if it's rhythmic like that, they might somebody might go into a trance and not be conscious of the movements in the process. Mm -hmm. If the if it's explicitly musical, but if you're taking the music as a sort of in the wider sense that the Greeks and Plato and that use it, in the case of like harmony harmonizing different components and um, uh, and the sort of brought you know because they were using music as a term for like wider education as well. Uh, if you take it like that, then it's the same principles, because, uh, similar principles, because you're, especially if you think of like an orchestra, because you're going to have multiple instruments and players happening all together, and then you require on the conductor to align them, but he's not playing all the instruments. Sometimes the conductor is also the pianist, but we'll leave that aside for now. The, but in general, he's not playing, so he's, but he's, it would all just fall apart if he wasn't there directing um, or um, helping them align the timings and stuff. So the analogy would be when I'm, the directions for the movements, which are structured in a certain way, would be like the conductor, and then you're bringing into play the different muscles, uh, different mechanisms is really actually, because I, I teach at the level of more mechanisms than specific muscles. And then uh, you're kind of aligning them and timing them like that. Sometimes you need to spend more time focusing on some of the instruments than others because when you're getting going and getting getting it, you know, building your orchestra. Uh, but and and also just as an analogy, when things are going wrong in posture, movement, and stuff, it, it's noisy. You're you're fidgeting. You have words coming in your head. You can't focus. It's actually like a noise of an org of music going wrong and out of time and not being aligned properly. And you're not you haven't coordinated the instruments. 
uh, together. So more, uh, so there's definitely a musical aspect to it like that. Uh, more practically, I have actually used music for doing the experiments on my own in the background. So I wasn't doing it along to the music, but specifically Bach, uh, people playing Bach on piano. It seemed to work, it works best with that piano. I don't know, I just prefer it. And uh, so I'd have it playing in the background. And there's something about Bach where the, there's the different layers of the, of um, uh, you know, the I'm not going to start talking about music like I know what I'm talking about, but uh, there's like different things going on at the same time. And every time you listen to it, you're tuning into a different thing at a different time. So it always seems fresh because you never hear it in exactly the same way. It depends what you, you're consciously choosing to tune into it whatever time, uh, which makes people obsessed over it once you understand it. There's, there's a cognitive component to understand, to listening to that, actually. It's not purely bodily like people think of music. Um, so that used to really help me. It would get me in the zone for doing it, for somehow coordinating multiple movements because you're doing, I'm teaching someone to do like six or eight movements at one time, but sometimes the sort of, in to make it practical, you know, in the beginning, I just take, get people to do them all at the same time. But technically, sometimes you have to program yourself to get some of the movements to happen slightly earlier than the other movements. And you need to start on some things need to, uh, the speed needs to be, some parts need to move faster than other parts all, all together in some kind of integrated way. Uh, and I just found Bach really helpful for getting in the zone for that because there's things going on at the same time. And sometimes you're focusing more on things you're doing with your legs and sometimes you're focusing more on things you're doing your shoulders, but it's always has to time coordinate back into the whole. So it's like, uh, it's very musical in that sense. So I just when you I say just, you did that, um, when you say you did that, would you listen to Bach for a short period of time and then turn it off and then go into the, the practice? Or would I, you have uh, them uh, do it simultaneously? Uh, I would listen to it briefly first. I would, what I was doing at that point, I was doing um, three times 10 minute practice sessions a day on the, the, the movement experiments I was working on. But like I was, I was doing, so in the 10 minutes, it's actually a long time, giving yourself multiple directions of movements and try to get yourself to do them in the moment, 10 minutes, no one can do 10 minutes in a row like that. You're just in the same way as you can't meditate for very long at the start, when you first start, your mind just goes everywhere. It's the same as that. It's actually harder than meditating in the beginning because uh, we're just not used to thinking of multiple things at once. But um, so I would, I would listen to, I would, so yeah, so at the start of the 10 minutes, I would plan what I was, the movements I was, I would put the music on and then plan what I was going to do for a few minutes. And then I would do, do some movements on video and then I would watch the video. Then I would do more movements based and change them based on what I just saw in the video. So it was like, it was always playing in the background. Um, I also, if I'm, I, I also find that kind of music good if I'm writing notes on something where I'm just generating ideas, I find that music helpful specifically Bach being played on piano um, is the most helpful for, for me. It'll be different for other people. I know people like weird electronic stuff and that, but that's just for when I'm generating ideas. If I'm actually writing for real, I can't listen to any music at all. The music has to come in my own head with the words or I can't, I can't write. It just disrupts me. And it doesn't, I know people get disrupted by music with words and I get disrupted by just any, any music when I'm writing. Uh, I don't know what that's, maybe just me um but in terms of getting in the zone for doing these things yeah music's really really useful yeah that type of music yeah what i find interesting is that um uh just just before you said you'd be um skeptical about using music too much because it might put people in a trance and they're not thinking as much but i think the way you do it I mean, you say you're getting in a zone, but what is the zone other than you're kind of putting yourself in a trance? But, <laughs> I wouldn't call it. I know what you mean, but it's it's focused awareness, but it's not. Yeah. Depends what you mean by trance. Yeah, I would conscious trance is a contradiction in terms, but it's more like a focused attention. It's been in in the zone. You're in the you're starting to focus your attention. And this is the key thing that makes what I'm doing different from other things that might sound similar to people is it's been able to focus on multiple things at one time. 
it's I know in the moment you can only think one thing, one thing, one thing. You know, in actual your perceptions, you're getting one thing at a time. So don't don't write into me with stuff about oh I did Buddhist meditation. You're only aware of one thing. I've done a lot. I know I get it. Um, but if you're trying to change your posture, there's many moving parts that are all interrelated. And if you move one thing, it affects something else. So you need to move many parts at the same time in order to get them to all move together. And for me, that means in two seconds, you need to uh, have some kind of intellectual framework in your mind, or a mental model or diagrams in your mind of how they all interrelate. And sort of in your understanding is all of these different parts and how they relate to one another. And then in the moment you're getting your movements to align with this deeper understanding, which you can't be, a, it's mental. It, it, it's um, conceptual. It's not a, in the moment. Uh, so what I'm saying is you, to be in the zone is to start thinking like that. that I need to have more than one thing in mind at one time. I need to have more than one ob mental object in mind at one time. And none of the mental objects exist on their own. They only exist in the network of the other objects. They're like part of a system. The system is not, is not infallible. You change it over time based on the experiments. Yeah, but the, um, I don't know. I don't know if you would agree with this or not. But the the music itself, um, it provides the backdrop. To, well, literally, like you have. Uh, that's an interesting couple of words. But it it. Um, it provides the backdrop, but it, what it's really doing is dropping away all the thoughts in the back, uh, like all the extraneous thoughts. To, yeah. So you said it's focusing you, but it's, yeah, it's, it's literally, it's like almost drowning out all those. Um, it's like the subconscious thoughts that are popping into your mind that you don't realize it just so your active mind can, can be unto itself uh, working on something. It's also, so you're in, you're now thinking about the relationships between the whole and the parts or like the one and the many. So you're like, yeah. it's how it all interrelates with one another. But then each, you have to go into the parts. So like the, uh, so in, in terms of just posture movement, like there t send, tends to be two schools where half of them get too focused on the parts. So you've got like all the muscle guys doing in, all the individual muscles. You've got the surgeons fixing little bits and pieces on the, you know, there's a place for surgery, obviously, but the, you know, they take a bit out or add a bit in here and there. Uh, it's all like particular parts uh, or do you wear a strap? You have all these devices that are to hold a part in place and stuff. Bend you and, in the right position. Yeah. Exactly. And then you get the other ones where it's like this holistic mindset where if I just think of, you know, if I'm very aware of my movements and I think as a whole and, I, you know, that kind of more kind of, um, it's very Eastern influenced usually, well, a Western version of Eastern stuff. Um, the if you try and maintain a sort of a feeling or a higher sense of the whole, then everything, all the parts will just align themselves and be whole. Uh, that doesn't work either. So I've tried both ways. You need to go from the whole to the parts, back to the whole. So it's like a process back and forth. So you, so in terms of the music, so that's maybe like, that is how I would listen to, to Bach. Uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to hear the, how it all fits together, hearing the whole thing. And then sometimes I'll focus on different, different parts of the music I can hear. And then how that's, that's happening on its own. And then you're going back to the whole and the whole thing's in harmony. It's not like you would suddenly know it would hurt your ear if, you, if it suddenly went out of time somewhere. Uh, you know, if you're Hannibal Lecter, you, you would obviously eat the person that went out of time in. If he does that. Uh, so like I get that. No, not the full thing, but I get the reaction to that is the, it's like that. It's a repul like a repulsion because it's now everything's out of order. Um, so it's that get you were talking about that before. It's that kind of drive for ordering things, and that's really what music is: is just creating order out of what would be chaos without it. Yeah. Um, do you think you could get to the point where you would? Um, so you, uh, let me just one. I keep on trying to think through it instead of just saying it when I should really just say it. Um, do you think you would get to, you could get to the point where you become adept at enough at this practice where say you could put a, um, even like a 10 second clip of the song that you used and you've mapped the instruction onto the song 
to where it automatically, you listen to it and without using the instruction anymore, it puts you in the right position. If you mean, could it get you into the right frame of mind to work better at practicing the movements? Yes. If you mean, will it do it for you? No. Then no. And the reason okay. I wouldn't do it for you is because it just comes down to the thing that everyone is always trying to escape. Um, is the having to actually consciously decide right now to do these things when all your habits and all your laziness and all these other things are just going to just do this, don't do that. It's just a hassle. Mm -hmm. There's never any escape from that ever. It's that like conscious will that you, you just can't outsource that to anything or anybody. This is what people are always trying to do. Get a strap for your back, go to get someone to manipulate your body and try and keep it once they've done it. Uh, lift some weights because then the muscle will be different and then you can you know lift weights for an hour a day and then the other 23 hours your body will be held up better or whatever talking about posture again it's all like outsourcing to some other thing because no one wants to go right now what am i going to do right now well i don't know what i'm going to do right now i don't know where the parts should be you can learn how where the parts should be and then but you have to decide you have to do it you have to put your attention on certain things decide what you want to do and then do it and then check to see if you did it because your feelings of the judgment of your face and your feelings will be inaccurate. Um, so if that's what you mean, uh, if what you mean is, will it get you in the zone? Yes. If you mean, will it do it yet for you? No. What I was, uh, what I was speculating about was more so if you could um, almost MK ultra yourself into oh, trigger, trigger uh, having a piece of music trigger you into uh, an automatic. Um... Um, so I know what you mean. So, like the this is the difference between what I'm teaching and like sort of and you say something like new thought or affirmations and stuff because a couple yeah. of people like, like a Pavlovian thought, response. They thought it was like that. So you're just saying these words, and then if you say them in a row, then your body will just start doing them. Uh, no, because the you're you have all this sort of subconscious programming, say, that's getting you to do the set of movements, and then these are like the conscious directed movements that you're using words, and they're like it's willful. You're deciding to do these things that you're saying. You're really saying you're going to. Do, I'm going to move this part forward of this part. I'm going to move this part, and you you list them, and then you try and do them all together at one time. You don't. You can't feel them all. Then you check on video or a teacher will say to you, well, they'll show you what, they, what you actually did. Um, so like one sheet, so you've got the subconscious habits that are like really strong. And then you've got these tiny little conscious words that just won't, they're just do nothing to begin with. He just gets like, fuck off. He says, he says he's going to do stuff all the time and he just never does it anyway. So I'll just ignore these words. It's too awkward. But then you just do it again and again. And then eventually your body parts are like, oh, fuck, he really, he really means it this time. I'm going to have to do it now. I'll do it a little bit just to shut him up and he maybe stop. And then he maybe go and do something else now. He's pleased himself. This may have all taken place in like one minute. This is what I was saying, 10 minutes, a long time. And then you, but then if you do it again, you can get more and more happening. And eventually they sort of, you've got the subconscious and the uh, instruct programs and then the conscious programs. And eventually the, the conscious program starts to take the lead slightly. Uh, so you, so in a sense, it, it, you're all the part the movements of the parts will start going along with the conscious plan by themselves more. So that does happen. So it's not like you have to consciously do it all the time because your things are wanting to be programmed and told what to do. So you, it's just, it's a better way to think about it. You're always, or the conductor. So they're always, you're conduct, you have to conduct all the time and then they can put them, leave them, trust them to play. They will play, they will learn, they will play more in time. In, you know, I would imagine an experienced musician in an orchestra could look away for a while and be okay for a while, but eventually he'll go wrong again without seeing the conductor. Maybe a good There's analogy. There's too many it. pieces um, to... Well, and it's just your perception can't take it all in because they're like physically in one place and they can only hear certain things. You can't... It's like... Yeah. Um, it's a... People... Your perception is limited, you know, like you can only be aware of so many things. And part of the work I've been doing is to be aware of more that you can train yourself to be aware of more things at once than you way more than you think you can. In the beginning, people can only move like two or three parts at one time together in terms of like coordinating your structure. Uh, eventually, you can do like 12, but you don't. 
you don't feel 12. So personally, like, you're like 12, you're like, your, your brain's already trying to go, how do I like, do all these like 12 movements at once? But it's not like that. It's you just, a different part of your brain takes over and does it for you. And that's where it's more musical because you're, you've kind of arranged the, you've written the music and now the parts will, will <laughs> the parts of the players will play along. So like you could, th- the analogy would be the, the musicians playing the different instruments. The instruments would be like the muscles and the mechanisms and the, the instrument and the musician would be the different mechanisms and then the music that they play would be the movements that you do. So I would, I would, just, I would put the music, the sounds of the music, I would, in this analogy, would be with the movements of the different body parts. So yeah, so I don't see why you couldn't design movements along with music. And I, um, somebody on Twitter suggested this, uh, Lin, the Lindy Fit guy suggested that this is what they were doing. He showed some pictures of vases where the, it's clear they're dancing, they're holding like spears or javelins, I suppose they were technically, but for the flags. Um, and it's clear like they're dancing to music and stuff. So I don't know, is this like a warm up to music or but from my point of view, it's probably something to do with conscious guidance of different movements. Uh, and that would be just come under preparatory work. And that was your kind of uh, all working on your operating system. And then when they actually did the events or the specific uh, activities, then that would be like the apps for the run better on your new operating system. Mm-hmm. Is that enough analogies for, for one sentence? It was great. I love the analogies. Um, yeah, I, I want, well, first of all, that was pretty much, you just uh, put on a lecture, a psychophysical lec- lecture right there. I suppose, yeah, that's an example of of lecture combining movement snip that out and that'll be what's that i'm sorry you broke up um yeah i suppose that's um that's an example of the way of we're talking about thinking about things is uh there's like no separation there between the it's like the mental models and the analogies of music and thinking in that way like so that's intellectual thinking along with movements uh, and then also dealing with the, uh, so I touched on briefly, like dealing with the emotional impact of new movements and new things, of just new things affect you. Uh, and you have to get yourself to do what you want to do, even though it feels weird or whatever. Um, or you have to learn to ignore it, or you have to learn to use it. Um, sometimes, so there's some sets of movements, even though you can't see yourself in video, you you know you probably aren't doing it correct because it doesn't feel weird enough yet. <laughs> uh, so that you just kind of learn not to experience. There's a kind of right, fe- there's a, there's a oh, wrong yes. feeling that is usually right, but not always, so you can't even trust it either. It's just a sort of trick sometimes. Um, uh, but yeah, so this is like at the beginning when I said we have to learn techniques to make us back, put us back together before we could do like a, make a sort of modern version of a gymnasium. Uh, because we're not starting from the same place as them. They're like culture has this worldview already. It's, you know, they're applying mathematics and philosophy to their movements and to the flex. I'm certain of this. They're probably taking making philosophy and mathematics, uh, mathematical discoveries out of war. Um, you know, arranging like um, best, uh, just like getting better at, w- at war, uh, not just the fighting, but strategies. And it's just all one thing. They're not separating all. Um, you know, all the philosophers were warriors before. The, you know, like the playwrights were warriors, you know, like the, uh, this was all just taken for granted that you were just multiple things. Uh, for us now, we have to kind of, we have to use techniques. So this is why I liked your, I like your, the way you treat fitness is because you're, you're bringing it to the up. You're bringing the, just what people think of as just physical movements. You're bringing it up to the level of intelligence of like, in, you're making it intelligent. Uh, and where I've been talking about is more, try to look at it more intelligently and then use the different way of looking at it to change the movements. So it's kind of like, our mind's kind of more kind of, mind into body and yours is more like body into mind this is kind of the way with direction generally speaking obviously it's not that's not hard and it's not exact but you know roughly 
And so it's stuff like that that guys really need to learn first. And then you use this new understanding or new way of being to then apply it to doing your different things, whether you're learning instruments or whether you're uh, doing various types of sports or whatever it is, uh, and then academic learning. Because everything I said earlier about organizing, harmonizing, coordinating different body parts, movements of different body parts into a coherent whole is exactly what you have to do with your mind to organize and coordinate ideas and uh, concepts into a coherent whole, which I didn't realize that at the beginning. That's what it was. It's the same thing. Yeah. The, Orchestrating um, your mind. On the subject of coordination, the one of the interesting things that um, this article talked about that we had mentioned previously is the different um, the different practices this is like physical practice it was running, leaping, throwing discus, wrestling, and boxing. And uh, boxing was the only one that like the elite athletes did because you could actually get really hurt uh, doing it. I, I guess you could for the other ones. But uh, all those other ones, uh, running, leaping, throwing, it's all, um, those are not isolated movements in any way. It's all a very coordinated movement where you're using like the whole body, even the leaping. Um, they said they would use hand weights, uh, sometimes weights on their shoulders. So now you have extra external weight that you have to balance and uh, move with. Um and uh, one of the interesting things about running that I uh, that he pointed out was the um, it was not really any long distance stuff. It was all between an eighth of a mile and two and a half miles. Maybe not all, but uh, the majority of it was. So um, I also thought that was just pretty interesting that there weren't any uh, dis anything for distance. Um, us, you have like, obviously the marathon is, uh, um, but, um, if you're just, um, there's this, um, so those are two interesting things on the topic of coordination. Um, it was, they pretty much, uh, only engaged in activities that were heavily um, heavily relied on coordination of the body um, and all in those four areas plus boxing running leaping throwing and wrestling uh, but it just it relates back to the point that you just made that uh, if you're doing things, these things with your body constantly coordinating you're also ha maybe have the presence of mind that you're doing them in your mind too the, the coordination of uh, different areas of study, different ideas. So you also uh, think like you're connecting you're, all these things. Yeah, I mean, you're, but you're, you have strategies for these things. If you're running, running where? So like if there are shorter distances, uh, and uh, sorry, to put it all sort of in a different frame, they're not like exercising for the fun of it. They're, it's beginning, this is training for war. This is like, you know, the javelin is getting good at throwing spears. The, like it was all it's beyond functional exercise because even functional exercise is like simulated you're doing what you think it would be you know it's not like for a real thing it's not for a real event you know like um uh building a house is different from piling stones on top of one another for exercise for natural exercise you know um so like everything's in the context of a bigger thing. So the running, the leaping, these are all things you're, they're going to use. You know, if you're, if they're charging in a, in a water, wherever they're, you're going to be running and jumping over th through and th um, over things to get to places and stuff quickly. It's going to be in small bursts, probably a lot of it. The people who did long distance running would be specialized thing. It wouldn't be something that everyone would train at like that. That would be a special skill that the, the, the ancient Greek Kenyans did, you know, like the, they were good at the, the one people who are good at it. Um, because why would ever interesting need to do that? that you say that? Because there's a uh, a theory that the uh, maybe not Kenya but Tanzania, there's um, an ancient Greek city that was in Tanzania that they found like pottery shards from 
uh, Rapta, Rapta. It's in the, the book that it was written about. There's like one chapter or one line uh, in a book called the per Periplus of the Erythrian Sea okay. um, or something like that. Uh, I, I remember reading about it when I was in college, but um, uh, this is going off topic now, but uh, just the, the idea that the, the Greeks may have um, even, who knows, maybe Kenyan runners first got their start at uh, uh, Well, I Greek mean, if there's a group of people that are known for runners... Tennessee, yeah. Because like they're referring in the Greek stuff, there's like they refer to this place. There's the people are like this and good at this and and stuff like that. So if there's a place that people were really skillful at something for whatever reason. It doesn't matter why. This place, this place is the people are really good runners in Kenya. It doesn't matter why. They just are. Uh, lot that long distance stuff. Um, they. Why would you not recruit people from those places for special if you had specialist jobs? So the. But that doesn't mean that that isn't the central thing everyone would, would learn. Um, so you, because people forget that when they when we think back to like ancient ancestors, we are even further back. We think of like um, archaic humans uh, in like small bands of um, hunter gatherers and stuff. Everyone tends to think that they're like obviously they were more they were more like jocks jock of all trades than we are. Obviously they were more like all these multiple talents you had to do all these different things to survive obviously but there were still groups of people and they would have still specialized within the groups not every you wouldn't have needed everyone in the group to be a persistence hunter runner it wouldn't be required for everyone to do it there'd be somebody who'd be really good and that would be that they would have a guy who did it there's a documentary where there's a guy who did it who does that that says he's the runner and he chases you know you see him chasing down the um kind of deer thing and uh so in terms of a gymnasium, there would be it would be you would there would be the core things, not just the core things you learn, but the learning how to learn. There'd be a core way of learning how to learn, which I think that the Greeks, based on their success, I think had something like this. It's not just the content of what they're learning; it's the way that they were learning um, that's different from what we were doing. So that's another thing for us to make a, a sort of modern version of this. We'd need to. There would need to be things that would be learning how to learn um, that you then apply to other things, which doesn't make it as like sexy sounding to somebody because everyone just wants to like they would just you know the guys are just gonna love the idea of a modern version of one of these places in their hometown that they can go to that hopefully has as nice weather like uh, Athens but probably doesn't um, and. Uh, just get down to just start doing things but i think we have more work to do it's just our yeah situation the um the concept of learning how to learn so in the way that i would practice it uh or things that i do myself i um if I'm using, say I'm like using a piece of equipment, I'm just trying to think up different atypical ways to use it or maneuver around it, or I give myself a couple rules around it. There's a, so that's one way. If I'm just trying to move my body myself, I, um, I'm trying to explore like little adaptations that I could do to a movement to try to perform the movement as I envision. So it, in your mind, would those be learning how to learn? Like, would those be examples of learning how to learn? Or do you have a different definition of that? Um, um, can you give an example of what you mean? So like, uh, so you mean like you're taking, uh, when you say it envision, what do you mean by envision there? So, okay, he, here's what I mean. What's that? Sorry. What did you, you mean broke by up. what did you mean by envision when you said envision? Did you have like a plan of what are you are you going as you do it or so like it's a very short plan <laughs> until I get the next piece of information, then right. uh, keep on going or not. Um, so like if I am 
one of the things that uh, I've been toying around with recently is actually feeling what a stretch is. Um, so like if I just hold my arm out and I could get in, into a position and as I, uh, I'll do it so you could see here, but as I move my hand down or up, not only I feel like the muscle contracting in my, uh, my forearm or whatever, but if I can, if I tilt my head away, I also feel the nerve, like you could feel the nerves in your hand actually stretching. And so you don't just, you don't just learn that by saying, okay, I'm going to hold my hand. I'm going to stretch my arm. And most people think it's just like, uh, like you get up in the morning, and you do a stretch, but like, are you actually paying attention to the things in your body that are moving or stretching? And can I, I could, I can make that happen. If I tilt my head away, I could feel the stretch through here. And it's not just a, mus a muscular stretch. It's a, a nerve ending stretch pretty much from my neck down to my fingertips. And you could feel the difference. I mean, the, the extreme, the extreme feeling of like a, of a nerve is like when you hit your funny bone, there's a nerve, uh, ulnar nerve or something that goes right over the bone there. And that's why when you hit it, you, you get that zinging feeling, but you could uh, mimic that to a lesser extent when you're just stretching it. And uh, that's, that's one of the things like, what I'm trying to say is that you don't just learn that by going through the motion of it. You have to pay attention to the motion of it and figure out what you're trying to do in that. Like, or it's more of like an open-ended question too. It's like, if I move away at this point, do I feel something different? And what can I also recruit in that? Like, can, if I move my shoulder down, does that more, put more pressure or less pressure on the nerve? If I move my shoulder, shoulder blade out, does that give more room for the nerve to move? Can I get deeper into the stretch? So, so do you mean that, like that's one example? So your strategy for learning how to learn is you is experimenting, is is trying things, seeing what happens, then uh, integrating that with the other things that you've seen happen, and then try the next thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least in this example, that, that's what I'm doing. I, I don't want to say that it's limited to that, but that's a lot of what I do when I'm trying to learn a different movement or find like the right type balance for something. Uh, it, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of paying attention to what's going on in the body and trying to read it as it's happening. Like, where, like can I do this? Uh, you, can I go into like a squat position and focus on holding myself with my quads as opposed to my glutes and hamstrings? So that there's a lot of different tension and you're, you're probably more likely to uh, feel exertion earlier if you're using just your quads to hold yourself up as opposed to your glutes and hamstrings because they're uh, most of the time there's more strength there. Um, but it, it is to, to your point. Yeah, it's it's a lot of trying to be aware and trying to pick up on the signals as they're coming in and then tinkering with those uh, tinkering with the variables to see how it, I can change it in different ways. And, and that's, to me, that's a way of like learning to map out my own body. Like what, what uh, motions also relate to different parts of the body and, and how they could be aligned or disaligned um, um, in different ways and maybe can in, in a certain way, I'm not necessarily like banking the thought, but I'm banking. Um, like I, I, I now have that in my, in my awareness to where it's something I could focus on when I'm doing or uh, even running or, or something along those lines to see if like that changes as I'm, as I'm running, can I change the way I'm moving in some way? Um, or even, uh, uh, yeah, it, I, I don't want to keep on saying the same thing over and over again, but, but what are your thoughts on that? Or do you think I'm hitting on something or missing something there? Is there too much, is there too much feeling in that and not enough actual, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, 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 the most useful thing I've learned about learn how to learn in the last few years for definite is, uh, sort of the experimental method with video um because 
it just helps you be more objective. Uh, there are obviously there's things you can learn through percept directly through their immediate perceptions, but I found it really useful seeing what's happening with future perceptions while looking on video to see what happened. So still perception, you still have to see what, you still always go back to real life. You're doing something for real, then you're kind of abstracting it out by you're looking at it on the video and you're just seeing all the different things. Um, but then you're judging by your sight this time. So basically I've just, I'm always telling like pupils, don't go by, don't go by your sensations, uh, don't go by your perceptions. But actually I'm saying swap your perceptions. I'm saying use different perceptions to judge your movements. So use sight on video later rather than the kinesthetic feelings uh, during the movement. Um, but over time of doing this, and this comes back to the psychophysical thing, over time, once you're analyzing movements on video like that, and then you do a new set of movements uh, using what you've just learned and you like, like you say tinkering. So like, okay, so that didn't work. Maybe if I, so my hips, my, um, just to speak more generally, like my, my hips are too far forward when I did that. So this time I'll do exactly the same set of movements, but I'll send the hips back twice as far as I need them to go back. That Twice as far as it feels like they need to go and see what happens. Then I tinker with that, then I experiment with that. And then I look in the video often and go, so it felt horrendous and wrong and then after or ridiculous. And then on I go, hmm, that's actually what I was aiming for that time, but it felt horrendous. So my tinkering would be like that. But the thing is, when you go back and you look at it again and do the new movements based on your new information, then when you do the new experiment, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong or better or worse, it's not really the point. And then when you go to look at it again, you've got your perceptions change. So like this is something I really just started discovering recently or understanding recently is, your perceptions are active. They're uh, what you see and feel, whether you're constructing them in real time. They're not, it's not like, uh, I don't want to get too philosophical, but it's not like. Um, Go ahead. It, it's not like your mind, it's not like your perceptions are just like independent of the world and independent of you. And they're just like a, an eye floating in the sky observing these things happen. And then you see them. If you can look really closely at what's happening, then you can do this other stuff. It's not that. It's. When you do this other stuff, you're experimenting with like this, when you go to see, your immediate perception will be different. You'll see new things. So if, as an example, I show people images or videos. What do you see this guy do? What do you think about this guy's structure or whatever? And they don't know because they don't know what to look at. They're seeing the same picture as me, but they just don't know what to look at. There's The intellectual understanding in their brain is not there yet. So then you just go through this process and then suddenly you're just automatically seeing things that you never saw before. And that's as immediate as your old perceptions where your old, what you saw, what you felt, what you noticed before. It's just as immediate. Now that's the world for you. That's the world you are actively uh, creating. Um, so you, it's a, it's a process of this, it's a process of changing the things you perceive. And that it's, I'm not saying that there's no external reality and you're just inventing it all in your mind. Uh, it doesn't that, that's not even does not relevant actually to what I'm saying whether what your philosophy of that stuff is some people have crazy stuff but the the point is you're there are no perceptions and by that I mean whether you're seeing something whether you're feeling something whether you're hearing something there are no perceptions outside of your understanding outside of your sort of whole conceptual understanding they're within the context of your life and the decisions and things you're doing. You're, they're not like this independent site that then you work with because once you've started working with it, the site has changed. Does this make sense? So like, uh, yeah. So like you, I had, when you I know more a, stuff, you can, you see differently. You, you will see differently. I look at someone on the street and I see differently immediately. There's no, like, it's not like I see the same thing as I would have seen before, but now I quickly do this thinking on top. It's not that. It's the actual structure of what I'm seeing is, is now different. Uh, take it just this silly example. Garrel walks past me on the beach. A few years ago, I see one thing. Now I see structure. I'm seeing, oh, this. she's doing this with the, the pelvis at the same time as doing this. No, like it just, happ it just happens automatically. Uh, for any young guys who are nervous talking to, <laughs> to, talking to women, this is actually a good trick learning about posture and stuff and because you'll see women... Uh, with, you'll see their postural issues and it'll get you out of your own head and you won't be as nervous speaking to them because you'll find something to uh, 
you'll know that they're not perfect. You know, a lot of guys have a problem with that where they they put the girl on the pedestal. Anyway, there's a tip for people. Uh, if you want to learn more, hire me. Uh, <laughs> not for the woman part, but that's weird. But for the, the, the seeing the posture thing. But that's, and, and in general, just another social situation that's useful if, if someone's, um, if someone is, a, if a situation is intimidating, if it's like a work or a business thing or whatever, and uh, if you, you're, you've trained yourself to see things differently, so your brain is automatically seeing the structure of, like I'm seeing the structure of the movements, I don't have time to go into my head and start worrying about what do they think of this and worried about this. There's just no space for that now. You, you're the the perceptions are. So, it talks to what you said earlier about whether it's happening by itself. Those kind of things will happen by themselves, but you don't just trust them to do that forever. You're always adding more conscious directions so that all the subconscious stuff is closer to what it is you're wanting anyway. And then you don't like what's happening, and then you tinker with it and you play with you play with changing it. Uh, <laughs> does this does any of this make sense um without it does images um i, I wanted to because i think we're the point of perception uh or the idea of perception uh, uh, um, get at the root what is what learning how to learn is and i think both of us are kind of dancing around the same thing. And it, it, it happens to be about this type of perception because I think like um, one of my philosophies uh, for lack of a better term is that the, to get someone to, to start changing their health, like from whatever they're doing now to being in a more healthy state, um, it's, it's a lot of just, First, you start, you surround yourself with these ideas or uh, so that you're picking up more on uh, like thinking about things in a healthy way. Like if, if people don't think about if their daily routine doesn't involve thinking about um, what they eat or how they move, they're not likely to find themselves in that or get it. They're not likely to find themselves on a path that will lead them towards a more healthy state because it's not in their realm of perception to be picking up on those things at all. But if you start talking about it with them more, when you ask them to start talking about it more, um, then they start picking up on, on all these different things. And over time, if you can do that consistently, you develop a, uh, it just, it gets included into your worldview. Yeah. That, that's, uh, like the, that's, the, that's the distinction I want to make is what you're saying is it's, when, when you talk about things like this, people, and I used to think this as well, and I used to train for this, is you think that you just have to get really, really good at perceiving things and you see things more and more things really quickly. You think that's what we mean when we say this, or, or I'm meaning it isn't what I mean. I don't mean that you, if you can just feel more body parts more and more closely, more and more perfectly, then you can control them all. It's not what I'm saying, what I'm saying or see more and more things. It's that you, your understanding, which is out of awareness, you know, your whole understanding, which your whole worldview, like you use the word worldview, your conceptual ecology, ecology or I've heard that phrase before, or you're just, um, just the way, just all the concepts and ideas that you have and how they interrelate with one another. That is what you're changing. And that's what's changing the, the perception in the moment to moments. So, you know, you perceive a different thing. It's not that you see more and more and more and more in that sense. Mm -hmm. When I was talking earlier about you're aware of more and more things, that's more and more things conceptually of where things should be in relation to one another. That's a level up from the direct perceptions. So like, as an example, before I started training in this stuff, elbow, the idea of an elbow to me is, you know, this part of my body. And I, you know, I see it sometimes and there's a feeling around that area. And then I know they're roughly the same idea as this. Other people have their own version of that. But when you start really getting down to it, you have to define what the, when you, if you start getting out of the immediate perception, then you have things that are in the realm of understanding a worldview or what elbow, you know, it's, you can start defining it in different ways, you know, it's the part halfway between your hand and your shoulder, or it's the, where you bend, you know, where the arm bends, uh, you can get, uh, it should be, you know, and then you can start defining more closely about where it would be in relative to other body parts and stuff like that. That's all intellectual. That's all conceptual. You, 
it's those things that you're I am when I'm saying thinking of more and more things at one time is you're it's those kind of cons conceptual relationships that you're manipulating in your mind. Not that you're perceiving more and more of the elbow, because that's just not helpful, because you can't do anything with that. Uh, <laughs> that's this is really hard to understand. I, I, I'm writing about this stuff, so it'll be I'll have something more usable for people at some point soon. Mm -hmm. So the like uh, the idea of worldview. Um, so that was a, that's a, uh, are we in agreement on that or, uh, or did if I? By world view, if I think by, if that's what you mean by worldview, I think it's like, you could say understanding, you're understanding how you, how things relate as a whole. And that's always kind of, it's like the difference between like a thought and words, you know, a thought is a whole thing, but then the words are like sequence, try to describe the thought, but you'll never get all mm -hmm. of the thought into the words. Uh, and you can start making relationships between the thoughts by using words and you break it into pieces. But it's like that thing I said earlier about you have to go from the whole to the parts and back to the whole. People get stuck in one of them. Uh, you have to just be constantly going through that process. And it's the experimental process is the same as that for me. You're moving the way you're and similar to what you're saying. Sounds like similar to what you're saying. Because the whole you start with the whole, you're just doing movements and seeing what happens. Then you're like, oh, I didn't notice this happened the last time I did this. So now you've, you're now focusing on a part and then you're like, start manipulating that part. You see variables. So now you're, you're now, oh, well, if I do this with that part, what would happen? And then you start expanding with that. And then you go back to this sort of, then you're going back to whole movements again and your whole movements may be better now because you've done some work on a part or you've integrated some rules and some things about a part that now made the whole even better uh, without you necessarily knowing that. And in your case, you're, what you're saying is you didn't know that in advance. You had to go through the, you had to learn to learn it through the experience, through the experiments to get to that stage. You can't just decide to have more understanding. You know, you can't, this is, and it goes back to like, you can't just read about a bunch of concepts and then just start, just have them in your head ready. And then you'll just start using them when you need them. It doesn't really work like that. You have to do something with them straight away or you'll just forget them. Mm. This is back to this house, back to school and forgets everything. It's useless unless you're using it. Um, that's something I wanted to talk about for psychophysical gymnasium and also just in general, physical yeah. education is um, making things rather than them being discipline oriented, being project oriented. Eh, sorry, rather than being subject oriented, being project oriented. So rather than you learn this subject, then this subject, then this subject, and then you, you have them all somehow in you and you're going to use them when you need them for a real project, is you just have a project that by doing the project, in order to uh, like a real thing. So it's not just some like joke project. It's like something that really needs to happen. Uh, that's useful or, or whatever. Uh, and by doing that, you have to learn these different components of a subject, but now you've integrated them and made them real because you've just used them. So all these new concepts you've enacted immediately, you haven't, uh, you haven't, they're not separate. So to me, that's psychophysical. You have ideas and actions and they're just this constant, flow between ideas and actions, concepts and perceptions uh, and movements and then con uh, your concepts, your perceptions, and then your, your um, will, your uh, just intent, your, the things you choose to do. Uh, so, and this is conscious. This is in your mind. You're deciding this in your mind to do it. And it brings into play all these. So for, for learning Tell me things, why that doesn't take discipline. Sorry, uh, you you said uh, to make things less disciplined. I just I just want to get your take on why that wouldn't require discipline. No, no, I didn't mean less disciplined. I mean um, less. Sorry, I meant uh, dis like a discipline or like a subject. Oh, oh, oh less okay. subject or Oh, I see what okay. you mean. Yeah. So no, I don't mean discipline oriented like that. Yeah. No, this is a type of discipline. It's just different. It's not harsh. It's not like overruling lazy discipline. Where it's not, um, it's not like you have your lazy emotion. I just can't bother anything, and then you have this harsh, no pain, no gain, over the top, and you learn to overpower one emotion, the new emotion, with the over the old emotion. It's not that. It's more like the musical thing where you're organizing different parts and getting them all to work together. But there's always the bit where it's you. It's always a bit you don't want to do in the moment because you're doing a new thing. 
it's just life. This is life. It's like, and I say this as a chronic, bad discipline, badly disciplined person most of my life. So like I was always just feeding towards the easier thing and then come out with all sorts of, yeah, but I'm feeling things deeper and I've got all the situations and stuff. I hear people doing this stuff all the time. I, I know the game. And uh, at some point you have to do what you don't want to do. You should all, obviously in your life, you're aiming for, you're doing more of the things that you enjoy, but in any moment to moment, you're frequently doing thing in the moment that you, you it's easier to choose this thing, but you have to choose this thing. You can't ever escape that. Uh, it's a total fallacy to think that you can just get in the flow and only do what you want. That's just like delusion. Um, but I know why people say it. I know why people aim for that. Uh, we could maybe talk about flow thing at another time because I'm pretty skeptical about the whole thing, but um, mm. in a way that would surprise people probably. Yeah. But the Let's talk about that with Eric. Okay, uh, yeah. I think that would be a good topic because um, it's something that he's brought up before, like a flow state, especially when it uh, relates to like how kids are more in a flow state too. So yeah, that would I, be don't know, to I don't know if it's him. like, I, so when I'm saying I'm skeptical, it's not that there's not a thing there in this, and I haven't like studied the literature about it for whatever that like the, what that is, but the, I think the gen it's, it's, I'm probably more reacting against the popular understanding of it, which is probably different based on everything else popular is wrong compared to the original. It's probably wrong too. Um, but I, again, that to me, it sounds like people are just looking for to throw off responsibility and just get into the state and it'll take care of itself. And I don't need to put any conscious effort in. Everyone's desperate for this in every field. We're just absolutely desperate to, to uh, have it, will work automatically this is like uh i don't know is it a technology culture but it's it's they're, they're really like everyone really wants to be a robot mm. craves it almost the i just had a thought on the tip of my mind the tip of my tongue um <clears throat> right before flow what were we talking about don't know. I was in the flow. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, we were talking about perceptions um, at one point, and then uh, education. Uh, no, it was like just just before. I've lost it. Um, maybe should have had a second coffee today. Um, damn, that's going to bother me now. Oh, I know. I know what I was going to say. Uh, the uh, You were talking about um, how people will, uh, I guess, avoiding the, the harsher decision or um, like they, they just most it's just natural for someone to do the things that they're most comfortable with. Yeah. Um, like the things that one, it's uh, I was thinking about it in terms of uh, like exercise. Like if someone doesn't exercise, they hate exercise because it makes them feel bad. Like one, psychologically, they feel bad because they're like, damn, I can't even walk up a flight of stairs with running out of, without running out of breath. Two, um, the actual feeling of being out of breath is not <laughs> pleasant or sore or whatever it is. Uh, they're just not comfortable with that feeling. The association uh, with that is just not pleasant, especially when you're starting from a very low level. Um, so the uh, the entire idea um, about learning is not so it's it's one, it's learning intellectually how to do things or structure your life. Uh, continuously move that project forward without uh, in a way that you're making progress. Um, but uh, two, it's also like physically, like you have to build capacities for your physical and um, like psychological pain can be really real if you don't have the uh, ability to think in a certain way or perceive things in a certain way, like especially 
especially as an adult, you like that's part of learning is to try to see things um, in new ways. Uh, and I, I brought this up previously, like you have to f- um, like form new neural circuitry uh, to, to learn something and for it to be a new learned pattern in your life. And that's not pleasant at all because um, it's like trying to forge a path through a, a, a dense jungle. Like there's no pathway there and you have to form it yourself and you're just you're constantly running into roadblock and road after roadblock because um, there's no, uh, it's all new. So that in in itself is just a, a, it's a difficult thing to do and it's not comfortable. So, uh, and if you don't push through that discomfort to actually form that new pathway for lack of a better term, um, you just, you don't learn or take on a new perception um, and that, that's part of, uh, I just wanted to relate that back to the idea of learning how to learn is, um, is kind of pushing against yourself in some ways. And it, it's, it's building these new patterns because you have, uh, you have a vision for how you want things to be. And the roadblocks are in the way of that. And you have to find a way around them or go through them or uh, carve something more so into your mind that wasn't there. This is it's why I like, think um, based on um, aiming on projects is so important because you have this higher meaning that you're aiming things towards. So when you hit those moments of you can't bother doing this thing, and this is like when people do exercise and not fit, they start, oh, I've got to do these exact repetitive movements this many times and bored. It's just like a means to an end. You're already just trying to get, it's a chore. It's just try to get out of the way. Whereas if that was within a higher project, uh, you 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 don't you're not as focused so much on the annoying stuff like that because you're it's just part of a bigger thing and it puts it in a smaller context and it's not as big a deal anymore and if the project is meaningful you want to keep going push through it you're so so like that that's like you're simultaneously doing something you don't want feel like doing in that moment you're doing things that are unpleasant but you're also wanting to do them because it's part of a bigger thing so like it's not like you're in this flow state where you're doing the f- one thing you want to do constantly you're it's more complex than that it's your you, i mean you working on a plan with multiple moving parts it's flow state fine yeah uh, we could call it that but you're not maybe it's like maybe what i dislike is that the people automatically assume maybe i'm i'm miss I could be misrepresenting what people talk about when they say this because I really don't know a lot about it. But I think I get the feeling that people think that, especially people who don't have quote flow states, are thinking that it's this really pleasant state you get in and it's going to be play. I think they have this pleasant feeling image attached to it. Whereas flow could be not pleasant, but you're still driven on towards it. And this is why like meaning is important because you'll keep doing it. And it engages more parts of your life, and you, uh, you're, you know, like you're 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 bound to get f- fitter doing something that's meaning more meaningful than something that's not, because you're engaging more things. I mean, I can't prove that. You're bound to get. Uh, I mean, the guys. I'm not qualified to talk about this, but the guy. A lot of the people who say they've made lots of money, they made more when they were doing something that was more meaningful to them. Not all, obviously loads of money's made in boarding stuff stuff, you know whatever but a lot of people said they made a lot more when they started doing things that were more meaningful to them Uh, and i think that's part of it i think it's the same thing i think it's kind of things that are harder to quantify um and that that you have to do through experimenting you don't just sit and come up with the answer you're engaged with the world experimenting tinkering tweaking things and then you react to that and then do something else and then you you find you don't find the thing you kind of construct the thing to the right thing to do um based it takes sorry um it takes like a multiple of energy to do something that you something that's hard and you don't Hmm. like to do you know so like not only are you fighting against like the the difficulty of the situation you're also fighting against the difficulty of your 
myself in that situation. Right. Um, uh, like vision for a project or, or something that you, a project is a good word for it. Um, you kind of, you're able to mitigate the difficulty of yourself in that situation because you can uh, see past yourself almost and, and more so the just see the project for what it is because I mean, there's a, I remember um, the, during my last job, we, we literally, I started a new location for a business and we had like a phone line. Uh, we didn't even have a phone line. I mean, when we started there, but the idea, the entire idea of the project and me coming on to that, uh, it coming into that job was to build out a new location. So that was the project for me. Um, and there was a certain point when we were in like the end of July and we got, uh, we just had shop space and then we got an office space across a little yard and there was no, uh, internet line to that office space. So it was like me and this other guy were digging a ditch in the middle of July in like 95 degrees. And it's not something like, uh, we, we were much, we were qualified for much higher things than digging a ditch to run a conduit line for the internet to, into the building. But it was like, we were willing to do that because, uh, it's, we needed to do it to, to fulfill the project, so to speak. So it was like, we could have come up with every excuse as to why we didn't want to do that, but it was just like, all right, this has to be done. So, uh, we're going to do it. And, um, I didn't know how to do any of that stuff, but we, you'd figure it out along the way um, just to, to get it done. And because it fulfills the vision for the project that you need to, to build out. I mean, what you said there is that you had to figure it out because it's not like you knew exactly where to put the ditch and you just, it's not like you just dig. Cause it's like, this is the way we're trained to separate the mind body like this. Oh, so, you dig in a ditch. Okay. That's just someone going like this. And no, it isn't. It's, where should we put this thing? So what do we need? Okay, so how deep does it, like there's so much thought needs to go in, well, if this happens, then that, if this, then that. And then you have to check other things, then you might start and go, shit, that's the wrong place. You have to do something different. Uh, there's like a strategy involved. Um, this is why I think a lot of the, the ancient Greek stuff, a lot of their stuff came from war strategies. They're really like thinking clearly about the best ways to do things. And uh how to combine it's again it's a type of music it's similar you're you're having to coordinate all these different movements together towards a common goal or like we're saying here a project uh bernstein who we were talking about at the start of this a long time ago is um he's talking about the difference between movements and actions movements you don't really do movements you have actions you're trying to do something the child is trying to do something is an action he's trying to accomplish and then the movements are just called all the different movements are recruited to to uh, complete the action. He can't complete the action in the beginning because he doesn't have the movements yet, but he, he, he doesn't develop the movements first and then go, okay, I've got these movements. What, what action will I do now with all these new movements? Doesn't It's the opposite. It's the whole the whole comes first. Complete this whole action. Can't do it. Okay, I need to get, try to get my leg. I have to flip over, trying to get over there or you know, whatever the kid is thinking. Um, and the funny thing is like, uh, uh, like sometimes in a kindergarten, the children are taught more project-based, you know, baking a cake. So you learn all the things involved with baking the cake and they're helping along and stuff. Then, so you get that when they're very young and then maybe like it's project-based kind of with the parents when they're trying to get the kid, help the kid walk across the room or, you know, to get over to the other side of the room or something or to go and, you know, to do these things or whatever. It's kind of project-based. The kindergarten, they're learning like that. And then when you go to normal school, like to school when you get older, everything's just cut up into little um, subjects and you learn abstractly and you're meant to contain all this to then go and use it later. And then when you finish school, you go to work and now it's project-based again and you can't implement any of the stuff you've just been doing for the last 15 years because it was all subject-based. You've forgotten all the concepts because you didn't um, internalize them by doing something. Uh, it's crazy if you think about it. Uh, so like, and then all like, then they're having, all the jobs are having to train people to, function as part of a project with multiple people uh, and the, no one cares about the the things that they learned all that really is doing is just screening for people who are not rebellious and will slightly will do well it can complete something and will do what they're told and on the time scale that they're told that's what you've learned that all that in between 
the school in between when really you should just carried on with the making the cake. There's your chemistry. There's your like all of those things in the, um, and then like to the ditch thing. There's loads in that. Like they're like, okay, so then you're putting cables in and how to like connect things and stuff. Uh, you're having to deal with people because other people might be inf- um, affected by this ditch and what you're doing to the road or whatever. You might have negotiate things with people. This is why, like, if you're making the education real, if it's a real thing in the real world, it's needed. You have all these things that you are, aren't factored in in the beginning that you can't imagine until you start doing it. Okay, you had to like make a deal with the other people to, to do this, to do it in this way. Like, if you've got land and you have neighbors to the side of the land, you're trying to make something new. Sometimes the neighbors will complain, uh, or the um, the government will lay or whatever, and you have to kind of negotiate these things and stuff. It's way more complex than just you're making digging a hole for a septic tank or something, you know? It's like uh, there's, there's so many things that are in it because you're doing something real that needs done as opposed to that needs done now as opposed to learning abstract stuff separately and then waiting for the day that you need to use it. It's just stupid. Yeah. The, and the, the the thing is, the the things that you learn are they're asking you before you learn them. They're already like the problem is asking you for immediate application. So it's not like it's not a concept that you learn in school, uh, like you said, and and you just plug it in here. It's uh, and you may use it someday. You're gonna you're gonna learn calculus because you may need it someday if you're in some high level engineering job. No, it, it's it's. Um, you need, uh, you need to figure out how to coordinate with the landlord and get a permit, uh, with the town, because that's what you need to do to, <laughs> to move. So now you need to learn around. how to write. You need to write a clear, yeah. you need to see what you're clear in, like, uh, you need to be able to communicate to like, uh, there's like, there's tons of these things that like writing, it's way more of a big deal is made of teaching people to read and write. I think they, they stretch out way longer. It needs to be just to justify schools School. and having them in schools all the time, because if it was real projects and they needed to write to get something, and if they don't write clearly enough and adult enough, it won't happen. So they're getting immediate feedback from the world. So then they're having to improve. And uh, you're going to learn more from, from doing that than you'll learn from uh, hundreds of hours of, of like, writing pointless things uh, like that aren't connected with the, the real world. It always comes back to that. It always comes back to whether it's plugged back into reality or not. Um, and uh, it's the same thing with the perceptions and stuff. You know, you're starting with the perceptions of your life. You're doing, you're thinking about all the movements and that you're kind of step back and you're thinking about pieces together and then you're back into real life, trying it. And you're back out looking what happened on like you're stepping in, stepping out, stepping in, stepping out all the time, both mm. mentally and physically. You know, you actually literally stand back and have a look and, and think sometimes, you know, the ditch. You stop and you're having a look to see if it's going in the right direction or whatever. Uh, and you might pause till you think think about it. Uh, people are idiot, the idiot, like a type of idiot is the person who doesn't stop. They just start and they just power through to the, the end of that thing. No matter what, they'll just complete that mission, you know. Um annoying because you don't my mission might be slightly different by the time you started uh so it really is like all when you when you start thinking about things like that it affects everything it has to Mm -hmm. i mean i don't have kids i know you don't have kids but i mean this would be all plays into parenting it would be how you all of these things would, would would be part of parenting it must be uh, and if you don't have these clear, if you don't have this clear in your head, you you can't go back, obviously, and redo things. Yeah, but I think the <laughs> the whole discipline, um, the whole subject blocks of subjects thing in school that are just like floating subjects, they're detached from real world things is uh, really like killing people's minds creatively (laughs) creative and creativity um way worse way worse than i think we realized and then of course like 
it's like that. It's just useless general knowledge. It's scrambling people's brains. Social media, not just social media in general, but the like news, the news, all these things all make sense in this context. It's all just floating pieces of information that are not connected with with the with the larger whole. Uh, and you just the person's just left in a confused state, looking for people to control, ready for people to control them, and um, you know people benefit from this. Yeah. The, uh, the point about creativity uh, um, that you just made, I think is important too, because it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily creativity in, in that it's a, can, has to be a creative field like art or music or literature, uh, uh, poems or something like that. It's more like uh, creativity in the sense that you are creating ways for yourself to uh, move past obstacles, to overcome obstacles in your way, uh, like in, in that it's creating new methods for yourself uh, and ways to move around it based on the situation. And that, that's, um, uh, that, that's just a different perspective on creativity. So like you could be a creative person um, not necessarily by being an artist, but just by, uh, finding new ways to get things done because you need to get them done and move on to the next phase of a project or, um, just continue to live the way you want or, or whatever it is. Um, so there's, I just want to bring that point up about creativity because I think that's, uh, it's kind of lost. Um, people think of creatives and they think of that you automatically have to be into uh, some type of art form, but it's yeah. also just figure, the, the ability to figure things out for yourself is a creative act. Yeah. I mean, the things you're talking about, it's creative, like the best way of organizing some just practical thing, like a ditch and stuff. Some people are just better at that. They're more creative. They just know how to do it in a better way, in a quicker way, or just, than others and then uh it's not like you know there's this kind of like people say oh everyone's just as creative everything they do is more creative we're not saying that it's like you read like there is a lot more thinking and a lot of physical stuff than people realize and there's a lot more physical influence or at least effect physical physical effect by doing things that are just seem purely intellectual in your head i mean take a sort of stereotype I don't know, go and look at some kind of maths professor or something and look at his body. Um, your physical is being affected by what you focus on intellectually in the same way as someone who's doing something very physical that requires a lot of creativity will get smarter by doing it, even if they're not seen as being academically smart. I know quite a few. I mean, I'm from a rural area and I know quite a few people who are like ultra smart practically it would not be seen as smart uh, academically at all. Uh, ultra smart practically. Uh, some of them very um, uh, funny, uh, which is, a, is an intelligence, which often isn't taken as intelligent by people who are only academically smart. Uh, and you, I mean, these things are, I mean, humor, psychophysical, totally. Oh. Uh, your uh, certain types of human as well, um, and all these things. I've I've noticed a connection sometimes with people who are practically smart often have uh, often seem to have a kind of sense of humor that matches that somehow. I've noticed that maybe I'm just um, generalizing too much with a few people, but I don't know. I've, I've seen that in certain people, um, again, not necessarily, uh, academically smart, like never went to college, probably skated through high school or whatever, but, uh, in true application of whatever their craft is or, uh, like genius level. And then, um, also very funny as well. Mm. So, uh, one of the guys I used to work with, he's always cracking jokes, always really hilarious. Um, it might also be that those type of jobs are more fun to be at. You're just having a laugh with some guys 
and you're doing you're moving around physically you're more likely to enjoy yourself than sitting in an office doing some stupid made up spreadsheets or something and um doing stuff that you know that doesn't really matter because it's not connected with anything uh it's uh yeah i mean like i would I would definitely choose if, if I was had to, choosing a job between a physical type of job and a, they self select for those things. Yeah, probably that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean the there's always a there's always an intellectual component to whatever anyone's doing, no matter how physical it is. Even ditch digging, what we're talking about, it. Uh, there's always something you need to think about. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Uh, um, what's the word? Again, it, it's not academic, but it is intelligent. Um, Part so. of this, well, the when we're talking about learning how to learn, it's it's knowing how it's how learn. It's knowing. It's how to know what's true. So, like in the beginning, you just think what you think in your head is true. And then you do something and then you realize what you thought isn't true because it didn't work or it's not true or you think a bit more and it's not true. You know, sometimes it's you're thinking about it and sometimes you're doing something and then you're like, okay, so what I thought was true is not quite like that. Um, so then you need to learn a way of knowing what's true so that you can apply that to whatever you're learning. Because how do you know if you're getting better? Everyone just kind of throws away responsibility to a teacher usually because you kind of have to do that for a lot of things. So they'll tell you. They're like you, they will decide whether you're doing it right or not. And then they just person will just hope I get so good at it that I don't need a teacher and I know myself. And they again they think it's just all mark in them, but really you have to build up the understanding. And you have to. So for me, what we we're talking about earlier is I discovered that not I didn't discover it, but I've learned from discovered for myself, learned for myself that you if you're looking for the truth, you can't know the truth by basing your when it comes to the postural stuff. How do you know it's true? Well, you can't go by your perceptions in the moment because if you watch, look on video enough times, you'll see yourself constantly doing things you thought you did something else or doing things you didn't even feel that you did at all. So you have to, the only way to know is by looking, using your perception by watching the video later. So that's like, that's learning how to know. That's that's a way of learning that then you can apply to other stuff. So now like in any situation, I'm like, it's not like second guessing myself. I'm always aware of, oh, this might just be something I think's true just now, but it might not be. How do I, how do, what do I need to do to learn what the real truth is? Sometimes it is another person needs to tell you. Uh, sometimes a video will do it. Sometimes uh, you don't know. Sometimes you just, you can reason it sometimes. It's just pure reason. Um, but even then you run into problems eventually. Uh, yeah. I think I've talked enough. Your turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Is there any other place you want to take this conversation? Um, talked about learning how to learn, describing uh, what a gymnasium would be if uh, it was if it was brought back together. Um, I think the first thing is tech is mind body techniques. But... So yeah, uh, youngsters on motorbikes outside. Um, the not my youngsters, uh, not my motorbikes, but the it would need to be mind body techniques that are integrating people again. I think that's the central thing, and that includes things that we you call learning how to learn, Tec um, mm -hmm. techniques, you know, like um, strategies, methods. Uh, which are cognitive. You need to learn the steps and the method, and you need to learn within that technique how do you know what's true and if you're making progress within that technique. So, sort of deeper levels of those that you can apply to other things. I think that's one thing. Um, and then it's obviously just uh, a mix of intellectual and physical things that are combined together in some ways. They, you know, people can experiment with this. And actually applying them at the same time. So, like we talked about this with uh, Richard, and I think in the one before, 
the video before. Uh, you know, like physical education should be things where you're they're more you're having to think and act as a group, and maybe you're, it's more like you know you come up have to come up with strategies and problem solving and stuff as well as what that's part of the activity rather than it just being a separate thing where you just go to class and do some academic stuff here and then you just run around on autopilot. You're just getting the body, forget your mind and do this thing to charge up your machine. Uh, I think all that's really mistaken. Um, so yeah, there's the two sides of it. There's the content of the subjects you would need to do, which are a good mix. Obviously the Greeks had uh, music, athletics, philosophy, other things. And uh, and then there's the what we moderns need is the mind body integration techniques, which I think is what's different for us than it is for them. Although they maybe had them too, I don't know. Yeah. Do you think that a uh, like a a wider shift of um, uh, perception about these things needs to occur? Uh, in that, uh, what I mean by prefacing with that is that a lot of people don't uh, willfully and act, uh, actively engage with these things in, in a way that's um, in a way where like they want to be there, they want to be doing it. Uh, they're open to the change that may come from it. A lot of people are more like transactional in these things. Um, it's like, it's common. Like I, I'm just going to uh, sign up for this thing because it's going to give me this thing. Mm. Um, as opposed to like, I think they're not all, uh, not um, everyone, obviously, but there's a, uh there's an overwhelming sense that it's like, what's in it for me type of thing where it's like, um, uh, I will only do this if I don't, if I can put in less work than you and get more than you. When I think the, the shift that has to change uh, or changes people to like willfully engage with these ideas and concepts, know that they're doing it for them and they're just using these as uh, uh, new to um, either may get stronger, be in less pain, uh, hold yourself up right better, um, whatever it may be. They like. Well, I guess what I'm asking is that: Do you see that perception as being a difficulty for uh, introducing something like this? Because I do, I, yes. I think it is. Um, you, there's a certain there's a certain level of difficulty that is just inherent in um, a society of comfort and convenience, which it seems like uh, so many aspects of what we do is are just about being comfortable and having things be convenient. That it, people miss the point in that, like you have to be actively engaged and willfully engaged in things. Um, to get the tr truest benefit out of them onto your lap uh, by paying money or um, whatever it may be. So do you mean like like, the, uh, like people doing things for as a means to an end rather than an end in itself? So they're like, it's more, it's just, it's a it comes down to meaning again. I think, isn't it? It's whether it's meaningful in a bigger sense whether it's something that's making them feel uh, personally meaningful that's towards their own growth rather than just yeah. this thing it's like a consumer kind of thing yeah okay, it's, consumer it's got to be a shift towards assuming more responsibility for the things that you are doing yeah um as yeah. opposed to just uh, i think that's what they're training them as well in this in the gymnasiums i mean uh, it wasn't just like athletes and warriors coming out of it. it was like playwrights statesmen all the philosophers they were like getting a complete education and there's a kind of and then that Chivit article gymnasium is similar to that one they're like you know in the publics in the like the the 
elite schools in England, you know, they started up this again where you got the more kind of complete education. There was kind of a lot of physical, uh, a large physical component to it, um, where they, this kind of mentality. So I think they were getting the, it's like a complete education, but these, this is like, again, in both places, it's like really, it's the ruling class they're training. So they're, this is not intended to be mass education at all. So now when people think of education, we're automatically thinking of mass education. Well, it's not even education, schooling, mass schooling. It's not the same thing at all as small groups of people being trained to be better humans. Um, many reasons for that. But the, but the, yeah, people just want, to, they don't want to become these things. They want to get them. <laughs> they want to just, get these skills course, yeah. like they want skills to have so and even to say that they have the skill rather than to become this being with that that skill is part of what they're doing anyway uh, again it's like part of the the project would be your life having a good life rather than getting a good grade or getting a skill to impress someone or whatever when you said that i i started to laugh in my head um i knew uh i had a friend in college he was a um very much like an engineering type. Uh, and um, he would, uh, it was like, we almost made a caricature of it, but um, we, we joked around that he would always say, oh, well, I'm doing this because I'm acquiring fun. <laughs> like, like he's getting fun out of, like he's, he's mining fun out of situations. Uh, but I don't, I got sidetracked there. No, that's a, that's a good example. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah. And some but things like, you can't go yeah. like fun and that you can't go for them directly. You, they ha they're like a side effect of something yeah, else. They emerge. Yeah. They're just like, they become like you, you, you can't directly go to try and have satisfaction with your life. You have to do other things that then you're oh, I'm satisfied with the way things are working now. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you get surprised by that. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you 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 know it. But the the like happiness or love and stuff like that. They they're kind of yeah. They don't. You can't do them directly. I don't think. Um, in the same way, as you can't. Not really. You can't directly go to sleep. You have to set the conditions for you to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will happen under the right conditions, and you're not putting the wrong conditions in the way all the time. Uh, something like that. So yeah, the people, the mentality people have towards stuff is definitely a problem because again, think of like compared to what you're doing, you're putting these videos on Twitter where you're like playing around all these movements and stuff in a, you know, in a nice field and stuff like that. And uh, outside, that's very, and you're just pl clearly playing around and showing people who you're playing around with, um, but it's like work, play work. That's so different from like the chore of going to the gym, have to go through this program and do this thing so I can get these muscles, so I can get this girl or I can have this higher status or whatever, lose weight, whatever. Um, it's that means to an end thing. It's not just part of who you are because uh, something I always struggled with when I was, I tried various kind of like workout kind of things and fitness things that involved doing certain days of the week and stuff. And I could never stick to anything because it was chores I had to do on certain days and it was just wasn't meaningful. It was just a pain. Uh, and I just put it down to lack of discipline which was part of it. But actually I realized later the problem was I wasn't doing something every day. As soon as I started doing something every day and it was just part of who I was and I was doing something every day, it was now meaningful because I was just, this, I'm the creature that's doing something like that every physical related every day. Uh, it just all, it was, e it's, it's easier for me to do something every day than it is to do twice a week actually easier um because i just won't do the twice a week even though they're really intense and whatever and they had a plan try to do this thing or whatever mm -hmm. uh so for me that's like i'm guessing it's true for other people too and this might be why children are so bored all the time in schools because they're there's just all these chores they have to do that doesn't mean anything to them Yeah, uh, I would say I'm I'm more like that too. Um, I like reading. Oh, you should read every day to all intelligent, um, successful people are reading. You should read this many hours a day and all that. 
If I tried to do that, I would just absolutely hate reading. But I'll end up reading an hour a day anyway because I was already doing it because I want to do that. It's not like mm-hmm. it's not a task. You don't in need order a rule to get something. Reading. Yeah, it's not in order to get something. I'm just doing it f- to do it almost. Play to get all yeah. these things from it, pleasure from it, knowledge from it, well, hopefully some wisdom maybe eventually. But the it's not tit for tat. It's not I'm doing this to get this thing. It's like friendship. You're not you're doing things for each other all the time, but you're not. You don't do one thing and go, okay, right, you owe me a thing for that thing I just did. That's not being a friend. That's like a business deal or something. Um, or yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's indirect. It's, it's an exchange. Again, it, yeah, yeah. It's di- but you are. But if if you're always giving and they're not giving back, then it becomes a problem. So the it is giving and taking, but it's not giving and taking this for that. It's explicitly. Yeah, it, that that destroys it. It's uh it's something else. It's like um. It happens that doing that leads to friendship, and friendship leads to doing that. But the friendship is the whole in this, and the doing the tip, the doing things is the parts. It's kind of, but you need both. You can't, mm-hmm. and you're going the back and forth. It's not like, um, you know, it's not like this. Tell me the rules. What's the rules to implement to make this person my friend? It'll get weird very soon. The person would feel something wrong with that, and uh, um. You've now lost the thing. You've lost the value that you were going at, you were aiming for in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly the same with all the health and fitness, I think. Same principle. It's just keep coming up the same principles all the time in different yeah. different areas. And we just, uh, every the modern way is just a lot of the stuff is just backwards. And if we just flip it, reframe the whole thing, then a lot of the problems just disappear straight away. But you, you can't make everyone else flip and reframe it at the same time. Uh, it seems to just be one by one by one by one. Yeah. So that's, uh, I guess that leads me to, uh, maybe you just answered it, but leads me to the question, like, do you, do you aim to get through to the people that kind of, uh, to change the people that are more of the, uh, type that would want to acquire things or to share things or, or do you just go for the, the people that are uh, willfully open to sharing their yeah, experience? If you want to, if like that, that's, that's what the groups I'm breaking them down, the acquiring group or the sharing group. Cause it seems like there's a lot more people wanting to acquire than to share. So. What do you mean by sharing? Uh, it's just a, uh, catch-all term for this other the group people that i mean are like uh willfully um uh the improvement improvements into their life because implicitly in that is that you are also sharing the things that you're doing Ah, um in some way it was just a it was just an easy term to label it yeah, but that, that comes naturally from the not doing things to acquire things and accumulate. The gr- it's more growth. If you're going for growth, organic growth, which happens its own. You set the conditions, but it happens by itself rather than you doing the growing. You know, like if you try to make a tree grow, it's ridiculous, but you can definitely make it grow better or worse based on how you set the conditions, mm-hmm. the initial conditions and the maintenance or lack of it. Um, so, like for people who, People who are focused on the growth, then they, they're you part of the growth is you sharing as you grow. You want to share. That's kind of I think that's just a human nature thing. You just mm-hmm. you a certain level. You just want like a lot of people not even, but a lot of people you just want to teach what you're learning. It's almost part of it. So we separate in our minds, you know, like learning, teaching. But really, I think I think it's just it comes out of it. I think it's part of it. It's the next phase of learning a lot of the time for a lot of it. it certainly is for me anyway. Uh, and I know it's like mm-hmm. a cliche, oh, you learn when you're teaching, but you definitely do. Uh, but it's more than that. It's something It's like the sharing is, is has to happen or you, st- you stunt the growth, I think. I mean, this might be similar to plants and trees and stuff. They create more of themselves and uh, you know they, that's what teaching is you're creating more of yourself 
Uh, it's the same process everywhere, I think. A little life. It's the same life process. It's just we're, it's our psychological, it's the psychological version of the tree growing and the fruit uh, dropping, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's a good analogy. You're full of good analogies today. Yeah. Not that you're not other days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today's an analogy day. Like, um, I was, I'm, I'm too, I was, I should, this is a good time to come up with another one about that, but I'm too tired. I was in a, a lot of uh, sunshine today. Mm. Uh, all right, cool. What do you think about uh, we could wrap up about there? Yeah, this would be a good time for me too. Yeah, we um, uh, just to wrap up, I well, we started a uh, there's a new Telegram channel and group. Uh, so for anybody listening, I think you could just go to the psychophysical Twitter page, and both of those links are up there. They're private groups, free to join. Uh, or private channel and group free to join. Um, the channel broadcasts different stuff that we'll be doing and talking about. I've been adding some stuff on there and the group is more of like a big chat. So for anybody that wants to engage and do the stuff that we talk about, um, I've been sharing a few things in there, uh, doing like a weekly either movement or fitness challenge. I might alternate back and forth between them. And then uh, just throughout the days, I'm going to be throwing in there a little uh, micro dose of movement, which is do 10 squats just throughout the day. So you get like a pretty much a text on your phone and just reminds you that, oh, maybe I should get up from my desk or get off the couch and move around a little bit. Oh, cool. uh, yeah. So that's called so like physical gymnasium. And that's our kind of first attempt at trying to make this kind of stuff real. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what it leads. I mean, you, I know you have an idea of having a physical place at some point. You've had this for a couple of years of yeah. where people learn these different things where you kind of, you'd kind of come up, you'd kind of came to the desire to create a psychophysical gymnasium before we, we even talked about the, this concept, but it was basically the same idea you had a while ago. Yeah. And, uh, we're just kind it of just a, into place, context. <laughs> a place to combine all the things I like to do. So, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, oh, it, there's a good, uh, good number of people in there already. Not a good number, but uh, people are in there and engaging, which I like. So and we'll it's put only a link, been out we'll put a link to the Telegram page underneath. So, for people who yeah. have never used Telegram before, you'll, they'll be, you'll, they'll, you can figure it out. Yeah. Um, and the good thing about Telegram is you can add your own videos of like up to two two gigabyte videos or something. So any length, more or less any length, as far as I know. So you can put some of the experiments and things you're doing on, and uh, ask other people their comments and stuff in a way that you can't really do on Twitter and those places. And uh, see see what happens. Yeah, we, we figured it would be the most. Um uh instead of us kind of like decreeing things it's actually a place where you could show what you're doing uh like people can participate that's the i think both of us kind of resonate with that idea that uh we'd rather be doing things than talking about things despite us having spent two hours talking about things um <laughs> again uh, so yeah <laughs> we kind of just want that uh a place to exist where it's not just us talking about things. It's uh, us doing things as well as other people who are interested in the same things, doing things and sharing that. So uh, I think it'll be a good place. And uh, like you said before, we'll see what comes about from it. 